have you heard of an anticillin? I, I, I think uh, antic is, I don't know how to say this. Antic, anticallin or anticillin? I can't, I'm, I'm going to get to the guy who's smart. What is it? But uh, it is a human derived biological compound, uh, and it is used to be, uh, it's, it's used to, uh, to heal <laughs> in ways that I think you're going to be very surprised. Joining us right now, Stephen Yoder is the CEO and president of Pierce Pharmaceuticals. Thanks for our good friends at 1-800-PR who brought them to us. Stephen, how are you, sir? Good to talk to you. I'm great. Thanks for having me today. It's a, it's a real pleasure. How do I say, okay, I, I know I've I got to be saying this wrong. How, it, it, is a, it is an anti calin right? That's right. Third what? time's a charm, and I think you've already highlighted that we are just an underappreciated story. So yes. it's a good time to talk about this and get it exposed to as many investors as possible. All right, well, here's the deal. So first of all, are you guys publicly traded or privately held? We are publicly traded. Uh, we're on NASDAQ. PIRS is our ticker. PIRS, NASDAQ company, is the ticker. So first of all, they yeah, are publicly ticker. traded. By the way, their website, PIRS.com, P-I-E-R-I-S.com. I'll put that on our website. I'll tweet it out to 21,000 of you uh, so you know that. So, so first of all, we're going to get a lot of eyeballs on you here, uh, Stephen. But talk to us. What is an anti what is What is that? Why do I care about that? <laughs> Well, I think at the outset, uh, you should care about that because um, it's important to point out that these anti kalins are a unique and fully proprietary drug class, okay? So we're not talking about just one or two drug programs, but we are advancing several highly differentiated drug programs, all based on the same class of molecules. Now, in terms of classes of molecules, you probably know something about a class of drugs called antibodies. Oh, yes. Very highly successful therapeutic drug class uh, today. Right. Right. Well, imagine if a single company owned that drug class. They today, as a therapeutic class, do more than 50 billion, with the B, in annual sales, mm -hmm. and they're projected at well over 100 billion by 2020. Wow! And I mentioned that. I mentioned yeah. antibodies because anti Kalins, they do have a lot of good things in common with antibodies. And, and let me just highlight three of them for right. you right, All right now. Very good. First. Um, they're both what we call targeted therapeutic proteins. Think about drugs hitting targets in the body. It's like shooting a bullet as opposed to some drugs, which is like shooting buckshot yeah. uh, at a target where you get a lot of collateral damage. So this means, like antibodies, anti-Kalins can avoid a lot of the off-target side effects that can exist with other drug classes like chemotherapy or other unpleasant therapies. That's one key benefit of the anti-Kalins. Okay. Um, second, and, and, and like typically most of the antibodies today, these are human-derived proteins. Now, what and is that? Now, now what, how is that? That a patient will not recognize this drug as a foreign object and mount oh. an immune response against it. And then finally, both of these drug classes, antibodies and any kalins, have excellent drug-like properties, such as good manufacturability profiles, and they can be developed in areas of high unmet medical needs, including the areas of cancer and autoimmune diseases. And of course, although these similarities are very beneficial for any kalins, the real excitement is on their differences. And as you might expect, our corporate strategy is to exploit these differences to do things with anti kalins that you can't do so readily with an antibody. But maybe before we go further, let me just stop there and see if that at least well, makes sense. Well, it, it does, and I have a couple questions, first of all. So, and so I have a little headache. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have an anti kalin for that. Yeah, that's that's good, yeah, I know. There. Well, that's what I want to ask you about. Talk about what, what specific, what, what specific uh, maladies do these anti kalins uh, target? Well, if you think about the, the area of targeted therapeutic proteins, um, any kalins track along that same area, where the majority is oncology. There's several types of cancers, right. large markets, areas of high unmet medical need that we're, we're playing in, autoimmune disorders such as asthma, uncontrolled asthma. These are, these are patients who have uncontrolled episodes that have to go to the hospital two or three times a year, a very high you know, pharmacoeconomic burden on the healthcare system. And by addressing anti kalins into these spaces, we believe we can bring highly differentiated therapies in these big markets and bring meaningful, meaningful benefits to patients. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep you over, first of all, because, because this, is, this is absolutely fascinating, number one. Number two, it's an interesting company. As I'm looking, um, as I'm looking at, uh, as this is a public company, their stock symbol, PIRS, PIRS, uh, Pierce Pharmaceuticals. You can go to P-I-E-R-I-S dot com. I'm not going to spell that website anymore because I'll let you just go to bigbizshow.com. I'll put a link there. I'll tweet it out to our 21,000 Twitter followers here and the 10,000 Twitter followers on, on Sully's Biz Brew. And, uh, but, but what I want to talk to him about when he comes back from the break is sort of the, the, the current drug development programs and, uh, and, and you know, what, what's the market size? What opportunity Ooh, is there? Because, because you, huge. You, know, you have to know 
that this is one of those uh, market sectors. And look at it. You know, you know, do you know what Occam's razor is? Yeah. What is it? Uh, this friend of mine, he's a Yiddish... Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Occam's is razor is amazing. the notion that you want to make the least amount of assumptions to get to your conclusion. Okay. okay. Well, if we know the size of the market, right. okay, which is which, which you can't argue. A billion. The only assumption you have to make is how much of that market can I capture? Right. And if you could, and if you like multiply that big market by like a little tiny number, and it still comes out to a lot of money, that's why these these type of companies. Are you are sure there wasn't the beggar and fiddler on no, the roof? Rip Nothing. Steven Yoder, Pierre's Pharmaceutical, Stock Symbol PIRS. Stand by, Big Biz Show coming back in a minute. What do you think the teacher's gonna look like? This is the Big Biz Show, the money talk show with less bang for your buck. Cool. Here again, Rusty Nails and Sully. That's right, Big Biz Show, bigbizshow.com. All 70 million households strong on television, uh, 150 radio stations. Uh, yep, we're TV and radio at the same time when yeah. the uh, radio mics go on, so the television cameras. Also, 175 countries and all the ships to see. God bless the military men and women listening to us on Armed Forces Radio Network, now called American Forces Radio. There you go. Uh, you know, I love I, there, there's, I love covering publicly traded companies when you get to talk to the CEO because it's so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so infrequent that you get to talk to the CEO. Yeah, they uh, usually have a secretary that gets in the way of talking to them, and you have to oh, leave yeah. a message. They're very big they're shots. Very busy. You can't talk to those people. Big shots, kind of a big uh, deal around so, there. Not so much with Stephen Yoder, who has agreed to come on the air with us, yeah. and uh, I'm keeping him longer than he anticipated. So he's being very generous with his time. Thanks again to our friends at 1-800-PR for booking uh, Stephen. President and CEO of Pierre's Pharmaceuticals. They're, they're a publicly traded company. P-I-R-S is the stock symbol. P-I-R-S is a stock symbol. You can go to pieris.com. That's P-I-E-R-I-S.com. But even better, just go to our website, bigbizshow.com, and I'll have the website there. I'll have his interview there. I will tweet it out to you, uh, 21,000. Tweet it. Uh, and then over on the, the Biz Brew Show, we'll put the, another 10,000 Twitter out. We'll, we'll send this guy. Uh, we'll send you information on these guys. Very interesting. So we've learned what an anti kalin is, Rusty Nails. And I, let me tell you what. So I, I Googled anti kalin Yeah, what came up? Um, Bruce Jenner. Their website. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Hey. I Googled anti kalin Yeah. And guess what is the very first thing that shows up? Pierce Pharmacy. There we go. Oh, shoot. Okay. I should I, you know, it was an easy. Steven, that's a good thing. Stop I mean, you got, I mean, what does that tell you? That You must be very proud of that because that, that was not a paid advertisement. When I, I Googled anti kalin and the first thing that shows up is Pierce Pharmaceuticals. That must, that, that means something. Well, I think it means that, you know, we're, we're really happy about getting, um, getting the exposure of the name Annie Kalin's link to Pierce. It also reflects that, you know, we do own this drug class. And again, that's such an important part of this story. Uh, we have a number of drug programs, and you wanted to talk about those, the areas we're going into. We've got so many shots on goal because we have a number of good partners helping us move those along. And each of these programs does, we believe, dress very big markets, areas of high medical need, and that's what keeps us motivated going every day. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, you because obviously it's not just about one drug; it's about uh, sustainability and scalability and several drugs. Do you guys have a a development program within Pierre's Pharmaceuticals? We actually have three that are fully proprietary to us that we're using the capital from our most recently um, um, finan most recent financing and underwritten offering just this past, past summer to advance three programs to uh, we think significant preclinical and clinical inflection points. Mm -hmm. These are areas that are pretty large. Uh, the most advanced program is an anemia program going after specific patients who we think are going to respond to the therapy that we have. Uh, this is a, a very large market, as we all know. Uh, secondly asthma, uncontrolled asthmatics, and this presents a very large opportunity. Sure. Again, we believe this would be potentially a several billion dollar opportunity for this program. And then thirdly, we're in this very hot area of immuno-oncology, and uh, we do believe we have something very unique to offer there as well, and just presented some nice data at a peer-reviewed conference last week showing that we have something very unique here in the bi-specific space. So very big markets, very high differentiation, well, but I, but I, but I and have a we question believe about... hopefully very, very good for patients in the future. Yeah. Stephen, you mentioned it the very beginning of this segment about uh, about uh, strategic alliances and such. Talk, you know, are any of those strategic partnerships or alliances big pharma? Absolutely. So you look at uh, Sanofi, uh, Sanofi Group. Uh, they're one of our two big pharmas that we're working with very actively. The other one is Daiichi Sankyo in Japan. Um, to give you power of the technology, uh, look at Sanofi. They've got an amazing collaboration with an antibody company, probably the largest collaboration in the world, uh, with an antibody company called Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. I believe they chose Pyrus as their only other novel therapeutic protein company to solve some of the gaps that antibodies leave behind. And just last week, they presented data at an infectious disease conference on a novel 
completely novel approach of Annie Kalins, uh, where we're having what we call tetra-specific molecules. We can link four unique Annie Kalins together at the DNA level, express that as a fusion proteins, and we're hitting four different classes of targets, collectively 20 targets with one protein, which would be under one IND. We're not aware of anyone that can do that, um, antibodies or other. Hmm. So that's a really powerful wow. technique, and we think Sanofi's um, really showcasing the differentiation by choosing us to do that. Before I let you out of here today, by the way, the name of the company, Pierre's Pharmaceuticals, I will tweet that out to about 30,000 of you there. Their stock symbol, P-I-R-S. Um, and if you go to our website, bigvisshow.com, I'll have a link to their website. But the, the, name, the, the way you spell Pierre's is P-I-E-R-I-S. You can go to Pierre's.com. But do you mind if I ask you, I, I, you know, you're a publicly traded company. You have a lot of uh, available information there. You raised, you raised over $100 million. Uh, from investors, that is nice. Yeah, th I mean that is Dude. impressive, and you got and you've got some venture funds involved in that. Um, uh, you know that that uh, and for you know for our listeners and our viewers, that tells you the strength of a company when you can do that. Yeah. People, you know, you're not getting investment capital unless you have uh, the good management team, a good market size, a good barrier to entry, a proprietary advantage, and a differentiator. Let's talk about that a little bit. How are you able to do that? Because that 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 is significant, Stephen. Yeah. I I think that uh, we've, we've shown a pronounced ability to deliver. Uh, we've got a great management team that's been there, be done, been there before and done that in, in another successful German biotech company. We've been complementing that capital you mentioned with rather significant licensing revenues. We've done more than 40, almost $45 million in licensing revenues, uh, about $15 million in grant revenues. That nicely complements the equity-based financing. It means we don't have to go back to the market as much as your, your average company. And yeah. that's translated into a, a, an amazing level of, of investors, and we have, for example, Orbimed, Tecla, Lombard ODA. Those are bellwether healthcare yeah, investors sure. that today collectively own about a third of the company. Well, and don't. I mention those because their names are so popular and because they have invested um, quite an amount of money into Pyrrhus, and uh, I think that's a testament to the large level of validation we have today and the, uh, hmm. the, the promise of tomorrow. Well, it certainly is, I mean, and I can tell you, uh, I can tell you that uh, without a doubt, having marquee investor names on that tells you almost everything you need right. to know about the company. I mean, really, it's... It's, it's like an endorsement from... Well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly right, because they're betting on the jockey, not the yes. horse, they're, they're betting on the, the entire... That is hey, so uh, cool. Uh, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for swinging by. Will you come back with us? We'd love to talk to you again about this company. Come on yeah, by. This was great. Thanks Thanks so much. Happy to thank come back. Appreciate sometime. it. Stephen Yoder is the president and CEO of Pierce Pharmaceutical. That makes me happy for the future, you know, yeah. knowing that, uh, you know, they, they can start to specifically target yes. things that's... That yes. are wrong with me and fix they me. need to yeah, they, yeah. yeah. and we so do maybe I got 25 good summers instead of 20 yeah and three uh, three really bad ones there likes thanks again to 1-800-PR for helping us out there <laughs>